On the 24th of November, 1572, John Knox departed this life to be with Christ whom he loved and served. About five o'clock in the afternoon, he said to his wife, go read where I cast my first anchor. She didn't need to be told what to read, but read John 17, verse number three. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. His breathing was laboured. And yet he said in those closing moments, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, that is where I cast my first anchor. Some people believe that eternal life speaks to us simply of heaven. And yet, my friends, the moment you receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour, you receive eternal life. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. In this high priestly prayer, the Lord Jesus says, Father, the hour is come, glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. Eternal life is in the power of the Son to give. What a wonderful gift. Whenever Adam walked with God in the garden, what sweet fellowship. But then he deliberately sinned against God and was driven from the garden. And sad today, man does not want to worship the sovereign God of heaven, but rather has raised to himself the gods of wood and stone and gold and silver. In the 17th chapter of the book of the Acts of the Apostles, Paul stood in the midst of Mars held and was grieved at the superstition, he said, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. You see, there's so many today, and they know about God, but they do not know God. The psalmist said, this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. A personal knowledge of God. In the book of Daniel, God revealed himself to Nebuchadnezzar the king. And he said this, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven. I blessed the Most High. I praised and honoured him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion and his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? God revealed himself to Nebuchadnezzar. Tell me, my friend, do you know God? Has God revealed himself to you? We see the wonderful power of God in creation. We see indeed his amazing revelation that God has given to us in his precious word. But my friend, there's something more. In this it says that they might know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. And here we find that we can truly know God through his Son. For God has revealed himself in the person of his Son. Our sin has separated us from God. But God provided in his Son a wonderful substitute, sin-bearer, saviour. He sent him to the cross of Calvary and there he shed his precious blood that man who was separated from God can be reconciled to God. As 1 John chapter 4 verse 10 says, Here in his love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation 
for our sin. Yes, you can know God and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Saviour. Have you cast your anchor where Knox first cast his? We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Saviour's love. Be sure you're anchored in Jesus. Heavenly Father, bless your word to our hearts. In Jesus' precious name, amen. From my heart to yours, home to yours, God bless you.